Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of August. Can you believe it? We are at August already. The year has gone so quickly. Today I'm wearing yellow in honor of the sun. We are going to have the sun in Leo along with some other transits this month. I will talk you through all of those transits. I just want to take a moment to welcome all the new subscribers. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. On this channel you will find so many interesting things. We've got planet meditations, we've got pick a cards, we've got you know lessons and tutorials my troubleshooting series i'll link it above you'll be able to check that out uh, we've got these transit videos where you can get the latest news for your signs so those of you who come here i think you'll have a lovely time in the comments below we've got really cool really nice fun people and i want to thank the those of you who are moderators on the channel Thank you so much to those of you who, you know, you help others along and you answer questions if I'm not there. I, I don't do comments anymore, guys. I do read them all. So thank you to everyone who comments, but I just haven't got time now to write back to everyone. Uh, I was doing that before, but I just don't have time because these days I'm busy with lots of client sessions. Thank you to all of those of you who book and making content for this channel. It's all very time consuming stuff. And uh, yeah, I spend all my time doing this work and I love it so much. So thank you to everyone who comes here. Now, what we're gonna cover today, I've got a little bit of channel news. I've got one news item to match up in the sky. I might as well do that quickly now. The, the one news item that I wanted to match up, uh, this is mainly off the top of my head. It was just a prediction I had made for the 30th of June. Those of you who watch every month, you'll remember that I said that that could be, I think it was around the 30th of June, I said things could be a bit tense on the world stage and they certainly were. I'll put an article by my side uh, that shows there were, I think it was riots in Paris and yeah, that was definitely a part of the world that was, uh, you know, that, that was really challenged by the energies. We had two debilitations in the sky. We had, I'm pretty sure there were some difficult aspects and things like that as well. Uh, yeah, it was, gosh, that was a tough time. My heart goes out to anyone in Paris, in that part of the world. Uh, you know, you're right next door to me here in, in the UK. So yeah, we've just been having, here in England, we've just been having lots of rain and that's about it. I think, I think people are, yeah, I, I kind of try and feel what people are like here. And I think people are, you know, in some parts of England, like a bit, a bit tired, a bit fed up. We've got Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn's making his way through his own two houses. You know, there is a bit of an energy of, um, there's a leftover exhaustion from 2020 to 2023. And I had said many videos ago that, you know, mental health will be a thing uh, at this time. And then of course we've got, you know, Saturn would be casting thirst, that aspect onto, yeah, Aries, the physical body. A lot of tired people, you know, things are slow, things are taking time, people are experiencing exhaustion. Um, there's a lot of change on the horizon and yeah, that's, that's definitely what I'm noticing here. But before we get into the energy for this month, I want to cover off a little bit of channel news. So there are just some small housekeeping, fun things that I want to talk about. So one of the fun things I wanted to let you know is that I've started doing interviews. And the first interview we have was with John Unal. John is a corporate trainer. He is a psychotherapist. He has numerous titles, a uh, really incredible person. And if you head over to the interview, I'll provide a link uh, probably in the description below. If I can add another one of those card things, I will. Um, definitely go and check that out. And the bit to check out, I have timestamped every single part of the interview. What you can do is you can click on, I think it's called guidance 
for leaving a toxic workplace. I think that's what it's called. If it's different, I'll, I'll put it on the screen, but definitely click on that. It's something like two or three minutes and click on that and see what John has to say, because that bit of guidance was so good. And I myself watched it two or three times. And I thought, you know, this guidance is really good for people who are not only leaving a toxic workplace, but if you are leaving a difficult relationship, or maybe you have left a difficult relationship and you still think about that person or whatever it is, that bit of guidance that John has provided is really good. It will help you to just get your energy back into present time. And there are lots of other little bits in that interview that you might wanna click through and take a look at. A lot of people have recently changed jobs, left a workplace, you know, um, been made redundant. There's all kinds of things going on. The, the movement at the moment in the jobs market is pretty big and amazing. And I know that because I'm working with you guys in, the sessions and a lot of you guys are experiencing change and upheaval when it comes to your work and relationships so definitely check out that interview the other thing i wanted to mention uh, about the work that i do is that i am now offering a package of sessions and i'm really happy to be offering this this is something i've been wanting to do for a while but it just you know, wasn't, I don't know, just, it just didn't happen. But now I've got the time and the energy and as well, I'm doing the live Zoom sessions here. They're going really well. And I can offer a package uh, of sessions. So if you hop on the website, click on book session, you will be able to see information about the package. It includes four sessions. Uh, it's real bargain I do believe <laughs> um, and it's four sessions one hour each and I wanted to do this because with quite a few of you I've been working in this way anyway some of you have opted you know some of you have done five or six sessions within one year and that is because you are really committed to your spiritual development and you know, at the end of each session, you appoint me kind of thing. So I, I don't suggest what the program should be. I always leave it up to your intuition. I don't direct it. But those of you who are very much on your spiritual path, you have felt strongly that you've wanted to, you know, book several sessions and, um, you know, where that is right for both of us of course that's that's wonderful i'll give you some examples of how i've been working with people so for example if you were to take the package you could look at one session we could look at d9 one session we could look at well d1 sorry we'd start with d1 obviously but then we'd look at d9 for a second session d10 for a third and maybe um, d60 or d20 for a fourth session so for some of you i have been working in that way some of you have wanted to do things like birth chart and then you want to go through nakshatras as a different uh, session for example also some of you may want to use the package for family members as well so you might want to gift uh, a session to you know your husband or with children it's interesting if if they're you know quite small children I might address it to the parent so um, and with children I will work with children if I've read for one of the parents first so that's just a little thing that I have there um, but yeah there's lots of ways basically of taking up the package if you would like to so um, yeah other items in channel news I just want to let you all know that there is no more newsletter that's another thing that has changed so yeah in, in some ways I'm expanding I'm adding the package sessions but in other ways I'm cutting things out so I'm cutting out the newsletter the newsletter was just expensive to run and I think I had about 340 people on there so I just thought you know what and I would write I, I would sit for like ages and write every sign and, and do all this work but then I thought well yeah it's just not feasible anymore so I've I've cut that out 
Um, and another thing that has changed as well is I has, have stopped the half hour session. Okay, so there is now no more half hour session. What I observed there is that not many people were booking it. So I have dropped it. What I've done instead is I've created a new offering. Now this is something interesting that I'm trying out and I thought, why not? Uh, I thought I'd put a reading available on Etsy. So I've got a little Etsy shop as well. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to do this for as well. If it doesn't fly, if it doesn't take off and no one's booking it, I, I won't bother. But I've got what's called um, a stream of consciousness reading on Etsy. And what this is, is it's, you'll notice that it is uh, quite cheap for one hour. But the thing is, it's going to be a sort of low prep reading. So if you book, what's the difference between booking through my website or booking through Etsy? Okay, if you book through my website, you get the full, the full fat, you know, <laughs> big reading where I do lots of work beforehand. And anyone who's ever worked with me, you know, I do a lot of work on each reading. I sit down and I prepare research notes. I've looked up texts. I've done all kinds of things. And then I sit down and hit record. So there's a lot of work that's gone into the reading. Um, with the stream of consciousness reading, what I'm wanting to do here is low prep. So maybe I've studied your chart for, you know, just, just sort of half an hour before I sit down to record. Uh, it's a quicker turnaround kind of a thing. So let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to give it a go. Also, you can instruct me via Etsy if you want me to use tarot cards uh, in your reading as well. I can certainly do that. So. It's just another option. I thought I'd give it a go. We'll see what happens with that. But definitely the main thing is on my website. That's where you get the full real offering. I just thought it'd be good to have, you know, a presence on Etsy as well. Just another way for people to find me. Again, something I'm just trying out there. All right, let's take a look at the astrology for I haven't spent too long. It's been a bit of waffle, 12 minutes. That's all right. Uh, I don't do that too often. So yeah, I needed to catch you up with all the channel news. Um, August astrology, let's take a look. Okay, what have we got going on? We have got a lot of activity in Leo. So that's why I've got the yellow on, guys. I think one of you did say that the cooler colors work better on me. They probably do. Thank you for that advice, whoever said that. I haven't as yet had my color scheme done. I know there's a whole science around what a person should wear. Um, I probably am more suited to cooler tones, but in honor of Leo and the sun being in Leo, I thought I would wear yellow. Uh, so yes, we have a lot of activity in Leo across August. Now we've got Venus retrograde in Leo through to about 6th, 7th August. I will link above if I can, if I can add multiple cards or whatever those are, I'll link above um, my Venus retrograde video. Definitely check that out because I cover in that one video uh, Venus's retrograde through Leo and then also her retrograde through and yes I say her I know it's a he in Vedic Astrology uh, in Cancer right so the Venus will also retrograde in Cancer so I've covered all of that there um, so we've got you know Venus there in Leo 6th to 7th August till about then we've got the continuation of the Mars Saturn opposition okay mars will leave leo on the 18th of august so we do have this mars saturn tension for a while and when i've spoken about this before i've talked about the cranking up of pressure this could be featuring in negotiations and things like that this could be tension on the world stage as well now we've got Mercury close to Mars through to about mid-August and I'm going to read that for every sign. This could just be a, something that irritates Mars a little bit but I'll, I'll read that for each sign so you'll see my thoughts there. Now the Sun steps into Leo on the 18th of August. 
So 18th of August onwards, we've got a strong sun and it's opposed a strong Saturn. And when I think about that, and I think about who do I know who's got that set up in their chart? And I always think of Jiddu Krishnamurti. I'll put his chart on the screen. You'll be able to see that he's got an exalted Saturn opposite an exalted sun. Now, I'm pretty sure they're running on the 410 axis. I don't know which way round they are off the top of my head, but I know that he's very much got that in his chart. And when I think about him and the energies he embodied, you know, he was this massively creative, brilliant thinker, but he was also rigid. He was also limited. You know, he, he was also very disciplined. And he had both of those energies really strong in him. So I feel like on the world stage, we're going to have some of this energy. We're going to have, you know, the sun's going to be feeling great because it's in Leo. It's in its own sign. And we might have, you know, empowered and emboldened leaders but then there is this cool gaze, this cool opposition from Saturn. There's restriction here. There's limitation here. So this is going to be quite interesting. Another thing that's really interesting is that the whole time that the sun is in Leo, Jupiter and Rahu are casting aspect onto Leo. So perhaps this feeling of you know, we want to grow, we want to be creative, we want to do things, but we can't with that Saturnian aspect that could be happening. There's also the, the Saturn aspect. I mean, this is Saturn in Aquarius. That's protest. That's, um, you know, the people putting limitations on the kings of today, the kings of the corporate world, the CEOs, the people running the show, the people who we don't see and we don't know who are running the show. There could be more revealing of who they are with Saturn's, I believe Saturn's casting a uh, 10th aspect into Scorpio, right? So we have had quite a few revelations of interesting things since Feb, March 2023. That will continue up until March 2025. So this could be, you know, if, if these leaders are being uh, emboldened and feeling very confident or cocky and creative, you know, Sun in Leo being expanded by Jupiter and Rahu aspect, you know, we could have some energy of the people uh, wanting to, to limit, limit that activity got here top people in corporations heads of governments there can be more and continued exposure of their activities at this time yeah and that's that Saturn aspect into Scorpio which is which is doing its job which is revealing what's going on more and more people are waking up all the time to the truth to reality you know this is happening all the time and it's rapidly accelerated since, yeah, I think since Saturn moved into Aquarius, uh, definitely. It's quite interesting if we observe the sun's movement throughout the whole year, where has the sun been? So since the sun entered Taurus, so that's since the 15th of May this year, the sun has been free of Saturn's aspect got here now the sun will be excited to be in Leo but has the cool gaze of Saturn so collectively some of us are going to feel limited equally some of us are actually going to feel more creative uh, the limitations won't be too much of a problem in fact the limitations could be useful in making us even more creative and I was thinking about this because there was a favorite uh, a favorite comedian of mine in Australia who she was really really funny when she was in a debate and in a debate she was given a topic and she had to stick to the topic and what I observed was that when she was given a topic and she had to stick to the topic she was brilliant she was really really funny 
But then when she did her own stand-up, and it was just free form, she could do anything she wanted, she wasn't as good. And this is that thing of limitations can make us more creative. That's classic Saturn Sun, that's classic Aquarius Leo interplay. Uh, you know, they say that need is the mother of all invention. So for some people, some people are going to be yeah, feeling, feeling a lot more creative at this time. I think that's it for my astrology overview. Those of you who would like to stick with me and watch the whole uh, zodiac unfold, you're very welcome. I'm just going to check the time. Do I need to change the battery or any of that? No, I think we're good. Uh, why don't we begin these mini reports? This time I'm going to take a look at, well, quite a few things. Mercury, Mars, Sun and, yes, Sun and Mars, the full moon and the new moon. By the way, I forgot to mention we are having two full moons this month. So what I'm going to do is, um, the other thing we're going to have is we're going to have Mercury retrograde as well. So I am actually going to do a special breakout video for Mercury retrograde and I will do a special breakout video for the extra full moon. So keep your eyes peeled for that on the channel. I will be doing that this month. All right, let's get into it. So Aries, Aries welcome. This is Aries ascendant, Aries moon or Aries sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now we've got Mercury stepping closer to Mars across the first part of the month in your fifth house. So you might find that you're more hands-on with your kids if you've got children. Uh, equally, if you've got any creative projects or creative, creative kind of things you want to do, um, you might find that you're more hands-on more able to spend time on your creativity but there is an element of frustration here this could also be with your partner as well especially if you're dating someone not necessarily if you're married but if you're dating there is some form of frustration here across the first i would say yeah the first half of the month here now mid-month the Sun steps into Leo in your fifth house while Mars steps into Virgo in your sixth house. So from the Sun's perspective, you have got great creative energy. You might find there's some limit to the creativity. That could be in the form of finances, that maybe there's not enough money to do what you want, or there could be some kind of time delay or something along these lines. So there's this sense of being very excited to be creative and to do something new, but you're meeting a limit of some kind. Now Mars is really fantastic for you. So that's mid-month onwards, Mars is going to be fantastic. This is great energy to get ahead either in your career or if you have some kind of court case going on or if you're involved in something where there's competition, you've got this winning Mars with you. Okay, so that's mid-month onwards. Now we've got the full moon in Capricorn, Shravana Nakshatra happening on the 1st of August in your 10th house. So you could observe something completing at work at this time. Uh, and it's also a good idea to listen carefully to the seniors around you. There might be some guidance to come through from them or some, some important information. But, but what you'll find is that your listening powers, your powers of listening are going to be heightened at this time. Now there's a new moon in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra happening on the 16th of August in your fourth house. So this is a really good time to shed any small limitations you have. If you have any small worries in the background, small anxieties, any of that. You know, we've got Ashleisha, which is ruled by Mercury. We've got the moon here. So this is your emotional state, but it's we're working at a micro level here. So if there are small things that you need to shed uh, or let go of, this is a really good time to do that, especially if there's something that you're worried about about to do with your home where you live or to do with your relationship with your mother or even how you nurture yourself. Aries, 
it's looking like a pretty good month for you I'm really excited especially about your Mars energy mid-month onwards that's going to be amazing so I want to thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Taurus Taurus welcome thank you so much for joining I'm just going to move this a bit closer there we go I'm all good now okay what's going on we've got Mercury stepping closer to Mars across the first part of the month in your fourth house so this is really good energy for work this is good energy for home related admin okay if there's some kind of admin to do with your home or paperwork or something like that this is a good time to get on top of that or to get that organized get that done this however is not great energy for moving okay so if you're moving house at this time you can still move don't worry about it but what I would say is be prepared for potential there could be potential delays or things not quite going to plan or there could be some slight frustrations something along those lines it's just something to bear in mind now mid-month the Sun steps into Leo in your fourth house while Mars steps into Virgo in your fifth house so from the sun's perspective mid-month onwards this could be a little bit tiring uh, this could be yeah just a bit draining a bit tiring you might want to rest if you're feeling tired you might notice that gosh I'm just exhausted out of nowhere okay this could be why now Mars this could actually be really good energy to learn something new if there's something you want to learn uh, maybe and this could be on your own as well because this is fifth house of the self-made person you know Leo is very self-made so you could be learning something new now we've got full moon in Capricorn Shravana Nakshatra happening on the 1st of August in your ninth house so something could be completing or coming full circle in relation to your father or perhaps bosses at work or authority or something along those lines you might also find that something completes in your studies if you are a student maybe you are completing your degree program or I don't know something's completing at this time or just a project maybe there's just some small project that you're working on that could be completing at this time now there's a new moon in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra happening on the 16th of August in your third house so this is a really great time to plant seeds for new friends to come into your life okay if you've been feeling like you know or, or you could do with a change in your friendship circle or but definitely to wish for more of those soul tribe people to come in this is a good time to wish for exactly that perhaps you want to wish just for more time to spend with the friends that you do have um, that could be another thing you wish for here but Taurus it's looking pretty good for you what you've got really nice here is that mercury uh, mercurial energy there in the fourth house that's really nice so I'm going to wish you well thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Gemini Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Gemini ascendant Gemini moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so we've got Mercury stepping closer to Mars this is across the first part of the month in your third house now this is really good energy when it comes to Mars okay so Mars is going to feel great Mars is going to feel energized I can get lots done you know I can try for new work or you know broaden my client base or if you're not working this can be I can get new work or I can get work or if you don't work at all this can just be you know I can get on top of things in my life I can get on top of the housework I can get on top of the admin I can get on top of things it's really really good energy from Mars's perspective Mercury however is a little bit frustrated here 
okay and especially as he inches closer to Mars there's just a little bit of frustration maybe that that happens um, across the first part of the month now mid-month we've got the Sun stepping into Leo in your third house while Mars steps into Virgo in your fourth house so from the Sun's point of view this is excellent energy for success okay this is that winning energy this is you being seen you being heard when you speak people listen okay so that's beautiful energy from the Sun's perspective mid-month onwards for Mars Mars is going to be fourth house mid-month onwards this is not the best energy for moving um, the other thing is you might also feel a bit of cabin fever mid-month onwards so if you've been working really hard and you know at home a lot or in your office space a lot or you've just been in one location a lot maybe you might want to get out and about maybe I don't know take a little day trip somewhere or just go somewhere new that would be a really good thing to do uh, mid-month onwards now we've got a full moon in Capricorn Travana Nakshatra happening on the 1st of August in your eighth house so your listening skills are going to be very sharp at this time and with this full moon happening in your eighth house this is a good time to listen for guidance from higher realms could be from ancestors even um, any you know spiritual guides you are connected to on the other side spiritual sources but this is a time where you could be quite in tune with all that is so that is pretty amazing could be a good time to keep a dream diary as well and if you're not keeping a dream diary you can record it on your iPhone <laughs> um, now we've got a new moon happening in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra 16th of August in your second house so this is a great time to plant seeds for big wealth and or to be shown all the tiny little steps that you need to take to get to that big wealth the reason I say tiny little steps is we've got Ashlesha which is lauded by Mercury and we've got the moon here the new moon happening here so this is a thing of and we've got the Sun there as well so the illumination of all the tiny little steps that it will take to get you to uh, to increasing your wealth and stability Gemini I am liking the look of this month for you especially when it comes to the Sun you have got sensational Sun energy Gemini I'm very happy for you so enjoy that and we are now going to welcome Cancer Cancer welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Cancer Ascendant Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so we've got Mercury stepping closer to Mars across the first part of the month in your second house so Mercury is really good here but Mars is a little bit frustrated so what I would say here this is happening in your second house Mars in the second means that you want to take care how you speak with your family members okay uh, perhaps don't say too much <laughs> to them as well that's one solution just not speaking as much or taking care in how you do speak to them that's a that's, you know this is a thing typically written in, in some of the Indian uh, sources that I've read when it comes to Mars in the second house but what this is is basically you might be tempted to really shout at your family members okay so this is just the polite way of saying try not to do that it can happen uh, but but mercury is good here okay so Mars is a bit grumpy there in the second house right with the family but mercury is great so what I'm happy to say here is that mercury energy is good you can you can just um, put your focus more on work across the first part of the month okay maybe that's the better thing to do because the energy for your work is really good mercury is on it he's sharp he's good in the second house I've got here um, yeah great to earn you know earn money as well mercury is very very good in the second house so there could be something about you um, you could even be bringing in more clients or bringing in more money if you're self-employed something along those lines if you do that'll be due to mercury 
Now mid-month we've got Sun stepping into Leo in your second house while Mars steps into Virgo in your third house. Okay so yes this is interesting Sun stepping into Leo in your second house there. Again we've got a focus on family but we've got this focus on that you might want time alone. Okay so Sun wherever Sun goes it's like how do you hug the sun? You know, the sun's not very huggable. It's something about you and family and maybe you're not huggable at this time. I don't know. It's an interesting way of phrasing that. But yeah, definitely you might want time alone, okay, uh, from, or time just away from your family. As I say, it's a, it's a better time for you to be engaging in your work. Uh, now Mars stepping to Virgo, Mars is sensational in your third house, okay. So that's great energy for winning new clients, for picking up work if you don't have work. Um, if you don't work at all, this is great energy for you to get on top of your admin, on top of your housework, on top of your cleaning and organizing and, and you know we've all got things to do. Mars is about doing. So you've got great physical energy and kind of success, winning energy here. So you and the outside world is great, Cancer, but you and your family or home life you know this might not be um, a fantastic month for those energies. Now we've got a full moon in Capricorn Shravana Nakshatra happening on the 1st of August in your seventh house. Okay so even without speaking at this time this is quite interesting you might be able to really hear your partner thinking out loud so that's on the 1st of August because your listening skills are going to be so sharp and in tune so you might actually kind of hear definitely your partner but this is also the other so when it comes to family members maybe you're hearing what they're thinking um, you can be a little bit telepathic this month cancer it is quite possible let me know in the comments below if that does happen this might be why you you know your Mars is frustrated and, and then yeah Sun in the second house could be frustrated as well I there's a, quite a picture forming here. Um, if you get a sense of what they're thinking you might want to confirm on it. You might want to just see is it is it true uh, first before you um, use your Mars or Sun. Who knows? But uh, yeah this, this is quite interesting energy. See, see if it makes you more telepathic with people around you. Now we've got a new moon in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra happening on the 16th of August in your first house. So this is a really great time to plant seeds for what you want most at this time. Cancer, this is, this is your new moon, okay? Whatever it is that you wish for, whatever it is that you've been longing for for a long time, maybe there's something you want to build, something you want to do, something you want to experience. You know, how about that? How about we experience more of life. I've been focusing on this quite a bit more because when we look at the build of our days we're inevitably spending many hours in front of a screen of some kind but that's not that's not real life that's not the experiential plane of life is it that's that's mind that's more mind you know and um, yeah life is is to be experienced there's so much out there and this is your new moon cancer so think big wish big dream big plant that seed on the 16th of august there and then let it go let it go let the universe build it and bring it to you okay that that will happen cancer i am liking the look of the energy here for you this month you've got great mercury energy you've got fantastic mars energy so you know while Mars is a bit frustrated at the start of the month, he's great in the second half of the month. And your Mercury is in really good shape too. So I'm wishing you well, Cancer. Take care. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon or Leo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now we have got Mercury stepping closer to Mars across the first part of the month in your first house. This could be a little bit draining. Uh, the energy here is not the best 
for you, either from Mars perspective or Mercury's perspective. Um, and I've got the note here that now it could also be that there are males in your life that are frustrated, possibly. These could be friends, these could be brothers, some males that are in your life that are frustrated, it's quite possible. Uh, we've got mid-month, the sun stepping into Leo in your first house, while Mars steps into Virgo in your second house. So the sun is great here, okay? You've got sun in your sign. This is wonderful, Leo. This is really, really good energy for you. This is shine time for you. Expand, be yourself, be creative, be the unlimited infinite being that you are. Now Mars, Mars could be a little bit frustrated with family at this time, okay? So that's mid-month onwards. Uh, you might find that, yeah, family, maybe there's just something frustrating about being with family. So I've got the note here, take care of how you speak with your family members. You know, instead of speaking, you could walk the dog, wash the dishes, do something else, I don't know. Um, We've got a full moon happening in Capricorn, Travana Nakshatra, happening on the 1st of August in your sixth house. So something might complete at work, something might come full circle at work, or this could be something to do with competition or a court case. It could be a stage of something that is completing at this time. Now there's a new moon happening in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra on the 16th of August in your 12th house. This is a great time to wish for a spiritual healing of some kind. Uh, the other thing to look out for on the 16th of August is that you might be a little bit more psychic at this time. You might get ideas at this time. You might want to keep a little dream journal at this time. But there's some kind of spiritual healing type energy that really could happen around this time here for you, Leo. And I'm very excited for that. Keep doing your spiritual work. Keep being on the path. Keep doing all that you do. And all of these cycles, you know, they're all looking to take you up. So, so keep, keep doing the amazing work that you do, Leo. Thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now we've got Mercury stepping closer to Mars across the first part of the month in your 12th house. So this could be a little bit tiring actually physically. Um, it's good time for light exercise or just to build some more exercise into your days if you can. It's also a good time to experience the contrast of rest versus activity. So if you can at this time, it's, it's good for you to experience true rest where you actually really don't do anything. And even when you're, where your mind isn't so engaged as well, if you can experience some time where you're truly switched off, that would be a really, really good thing. Now we've got mid-month, Sun steps into Leo in your 12th house, while Mars steps into Virgo in your first house. So from the Sun's perspective from mid-month onwards, it could be hard for you to sleep this month. Um, and that's especially, it could be all month actually, but I don't want to say that. I don't, I don't, I want you to sleep well, Virgo. So I don't want to project that idea into the, well, the whole month, you're not going to sleep. But if you find it hard to sleep this month, you've got a reason as to why, um, because you've got Mercury and Mars in the 12th. So that is activity in the 12th as well. So if it's hard to sleep some nights, uh, this month, you know why, but it, it could be especially so mid-month onwards, okay. Um, the way around that though is exercise. If you just exercise during the day, kind of drain your physical energy, you will sleep well at night. They also say that another thing that I've, I've heard as well is, okay, eating bananas, 
the potassium or something some, that that's supposedly very good and I've heard as well eating pasta at night but again I don't want to recommend that because some of you probably don't eat pasta at night and you're on keto or whatever I don't know there are all these diets and yeah I don't know but um, I have found that yeah eating bananas does help and I've found eating pasta does help as well um, but exercise is very good too I need to exercise more. I'm terrible at exercise. I need to do that more. All right, now let's have a look here. Mars, uh, pay attention to your physical exercise, yeah, and health mid-month onwards. Yes, this is a big exercise. This is a big sort of physical time for you here, Virgo. This is really a time of looking after the physical body and of experiencing true rest. To, for you to know what is true rest, like what the thing that you don't want is to have that sort of fuzzy rest where you're kind of lying down but your mind is still going no 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 experience full true rest full true mind body rest if you can do that periodically this month everything's going to be fine uh it's going to be good now let's have a look here um full moon in capricorn shravana nakshatra this is happening on the 1st of August in your fifth house. So if you have children, this is a time where you'll be able to really listen deeply to them and really hear them, perhaps in a way that you haven't heard them before. That's gonna be an amazing gift to your children. Something could be coming full circle at work or with your creativity. Or if you're a student, you're studying, something could be culminating and completing uh, in that area too. Now there's a new moon in Cancer, Ashlesha Nakshatra, happening on the 16th of August in your 11th house. So this is a great time to wish for what you want to have happen. Uh, this is, yes, this is the 11th house. Oh my goodness, you can wish for what you want. Absolutely. The 11th house to me is like, you know, when you pass go on the Monopoly board and everybody collects $200 or whatever it is. Um, that's what this is like. The 11th house is just, you know, such a house of profit and whatever you want, you can have kind of thing. So it's a good time to wish for all that you want, especially if it's financial or gains or that kind of thing. Plant a terrific wish uh, for that and then let it go. Let the universe make it happen and bring it to you. Virgo, this is going to be a good month for you if you're able to combine physical activity or exercise with deep rest. And if you can discover deep rest at periods across this month, it's going to be a good month for you. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome, welcome Libra. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant. Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now we've got Mercury stepping closer to Mars across the first part of the month in your 11th house. This is beautiful energy from both perspectives. Mercury and Mars love being in the 11th house. In fact, every planet loves being in the 11th house. So you've got two strong energies here that are wanting you to achieve success they're wanting you to win new clients, win jobs, have more friends, everything, right? This is this is just good energy that the both of these planets are on your side. If there is to be a little bit of frustration with Mercury stepping closer to Mars, you might observe that in perhaps some of your male co-workers or your male siblings or something along those lines, but truly the energy is great here for you especially across the first part of the month now mid-month sun steps into leo in your 11th house while mars steps into virgo in your 12th house so from the sun's perspective this is wonderful energy all that great successful beautiful energy that you know we have mercury and mars enjoying in the first part of the month the sun is just going to continue that so that's great you've got the sun stepping in to keep enjoying that 11th house there that's wonderful energy now mars is going to be in your 12th house mid-month onwards and that is good energy for exercise it's good energy to add in some maybe light yoga or qigong or this kind of thing and 
it's also good to see if you can experience some true rest some true downtime as well so if you're feeling energy wise you're a bit imbalanced definitely do the exercise but also do some true rest uh, and, and deep relaxation as well if you can now there's a full moon in Capricorn Shravana Nakshatra on the 1st of August happening in your fourth house so it's a great time to connect with your mother and hear her wisdom okay and that is if she is you know here on the earth plane or if she has transitioned uh, and, and you want to connect with your mother or connect with perhaps mother and mother's line or, or any of that uh, you will be able to deeply listen and experience your mother's wisdom at this time Shravana Nakshatra is very much about listening and yeah I in, in some of the client sessions with you guys I have met some of you incredible Shravana beings and you're amazing you know people with ascendant Shravana wow they listen uh, and, you, and a person speaking to them feels so listened to and so understood it's extraordinary so yeah you've got this gift of listening here on the 1st of August in your fourth house now there's a new moon in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra happening on the 16th of August in your 10th house so this is a great time to project forward into your own timeline what you would like to have happen in your career okay and that is another way of me saying that you can wish for what you would like to have happen in your career but if you project forward into it if you visualize and think you know what I'd really like this to happen and you see yourself doing it it will yes yeah, very likely come about you know you put the wish in and let it go and the universe will make that happen and bring it to you so Libra you have got sensational energy across this month let me tell you you are one of the lucky signs uh, just about everyone's got some hint of frustration somewhere or some difficulty whereas you've got a lot of energy that's just promoting your success and you know great great energy here Libra I'm very happy for you so uh, enjoy that and we are now going to welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Scorpio ascendant Scorpio moon or Scorpio sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so now we've got Mercury stepping closer to Mars across the first part of the month in your 10th house so this is excellent energy for work uh, Mars could be just a little bit frustrated not much Mars does well in the 10th Mars does even better in the 11th Mars the only thing Mars could be a little bit frustrated about is like um, that Mars might like to do even more <laughs> you know the, if the ambition is quite high what I would just say here is just stay humble okay but you've got Mercury here Mercury is great in the 10th so both of them both of them do really well in the tent so this is great energy for work career if you're not working at this time this could be great energy to get work if you don't work at all this is great energy for you to just be on top of things in your life to be on top of your admin on top of your cleaning or your organizing or you know we've all got some work to do in the world or, or you're on top of looking after your physical body you know so you're on top of something at this time and you're feeling good here now mid-month we've got sun stepping into leo in your 10th house while mars steps into virgo in your 11th house so this is great energy really really good so sun's energy mid-month onwards is absolutely excellent this is great for career this is great for being seen this is great for good health this is great for time with friends adding new friends to your social circle something about you being seen though definitely um, now mars energy mid-month onwards this is excellent for career achievement building networks you know bringing in more money all that kind of thing you've got great energy here Scorpio 
Now there's a full moon happening in Capricorn Shravana Nakshatra on the 1st of August in your third house. So you may see some cycles close out in your friendship circles. And this is a really good time for you to listen to your friends as well. You might be able to really deeply listen to a friend of yours uh, and really be there for someone. And that is such a special gift actually to give to someone when they feel very deeply listened to. That's quite extraordinary. So you've got this ability to deeply listen to someone here, Scorpio on the 1st of August, it's very special. Now there's a new moon happening in Cancer Ashleshya Nakshatra on the 16th of August in your ninth house. So you could wish for a relationship uh, healing, sorry, in your relationship with your father. Okay, um, gosh, I was just going to say you could wish for a relationship with your father. So I mean somebody here might need to hear that because maybe, you know, and I do work with um, people with whom, you know, they are kind of estranged from father or father left when they were a child or they're adopted. I've worked with many people in this situation so yeah I mean you could wish for a connection with father um, if you feel that you've never had that uh, or wish for a healing in relationship with father or you know the male principle in your life as in the male side of the male side of our body is the right side of our body you know you might you might chronically have pain uh, right shoulder pain or something like that. That by the way can actually apparently come from your gallbladder. You might want to check Dr. Berg for that. That's another thing altogether. But what I wanted to say here is that yeah you could wish for a healing on the right side of your body. Uh, that could be you know very very helpful. I remember this was a long time ago. This is just reminding me of um, here in London I went to uh, gosh it was some kind of church and there was some kind of healing thing and anyway this lady she was just kind of with her hands checking my aura it was like a reconnective healing type thing they don't touch your body but they do things with their hands and they're checking your aura anyway she said to me after just five or ten minutes she said oh what's your relation how's no she said how's your how's the health of your father and I said oh yeah my dad's not well and she's like, yeah, I could feel that. Like she, she really did. She tuned in. She knew. Just by checking the right side of my body, she could see that my father wasn't well. Isn't that amazing? So yeah, you could wish for a healing on the right side of your body at this time. Um, the other thing that you could be wishing for on this new moon, Cancer, Ashleshya, Nakshatra, this beautiful new moon, you could wish to learn something new with ease. You could also wish to be admitted into um, a degree program if you want to embark on a new course of study. Okay, or you could wish for the money in order to be able to do that or, or whatever it is. So Scorpio, you've got amazing energy here. I'm very happy for you. Okay, you're one of the few signs that's got some really great energy in here. So definitely make the most of that Scorpio. All right, we are now going to work. Hi there Sagittarius. So now this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Yes, I do realize the scene has totally changed. It's daytime, I'm wearing something different, it's the next day. What happened was, Sagittarius, there is a slight error in the notes from Sagittarius onwards. I mixed up the houses for Mars. So I have to record Sag, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces again. Thank you to one of you eagle-eyed viewers out there who spotted the error and told me about it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So let's begin here. Sagittarius, what's going on for you in the month of August? Right, so well we have Saturn retrograde. Okay, so <laughs> Saturn retrograde is continuing. I'm wearing dark blue and yes, I've been caught. I've been caught out by Saturn. Uh, you know, my error has been seen and I have to redo some work. You might have to redo some work as well. In fact, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, 
and Pisces, there might be some redoing of something. So that's message number one. But across the month of August, we have got Mercury stepping closer to Mars. Okay, and that's going to happen in the first part of the month in your ninth house. So there could be some frustrations in relationships with people senior to you, could be your father. If you're studying, your student could be your professors or your teachers or someone like that. There might just be frustrations possibly with authority you know authority figures that that's a possibility there now mid-month the sun is going to step into leo in your ninth house while mars is going to step into virgo in your tenth house okay so that's where i made the error before i think i i didn't say tenth house i said a different house so let's take a look at the sun so from the sun perspective there could be challenges in relationships with seniors or authority right so that's going to continue from when we had the mars energy there in your ninth house but mars is going to move and mars is going to be in the 10th house mid-month onwards that's going to be good energy for your career your ambition might be quite high just take care of that be humble you're gonna get even more time to shine when mars steps in the 11th that's going to be even better for career so you've got some really good stars here at the moment now we've got a full moon in capricorn shravana nakshatra happening on the 1st of august in your second house so a cycle may close out regarding your family okay you're going to be a great listener at this time so definitely give the gift of listening to a close family member if there's someone around you who you know could do with having a real heart-to-heart -heart conversation this is a good time for that um, definitely listen to someone close to you on the 1st of August and then we've got a new moon in Cancer Ashleisha Nakshatra happening on the 16th of August in your 8th house so this is a time to wish for a renewal of your aura at this time okay uh, micro dynamics of all kinds can heal at this time this is because Ashleisha Nakshatra is lauded by Mercury and yes yeah, this, this is a great time to do some healing but at a, at a very refined level so you know you can ask your spiritual team that's on the other side to renew your aura refresh your aura any of that will be great on the 16th of august sagittarius i want to thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, yes, you can see that the scene has changed. It's the next day and uh, I'm not wearing yellow, I'm wearing dark blue. And of course I'm wearing dark blue because I've been caught by Saturn. Uh, maybe Saturn has worked its, his magic through one of you. One of you very eagle-eyed viewers uh, alerted me on the channel to the fact that you know, we've got an error. Now you said you spotted it in Aquarius. I went through all my notes and I discovered, oh, this error has actually been from Sagittarius onwards. So I am sorting that out and I'm redoing something. Okay, we've got Saturn retrograde. There could be something that needs to be redone. Maybe something you have to revisit. All right, this could be a message for someone out there. So Mercury, what, what do we have across? August. Well, we've got Mercury stepping closer to Mars across the first part of the month in your eighth house. So there could be frustrations in relationships with in-laws or with partner. This is a bit of an ongoing thing, Capricorn, and I'm really wishing you well if you're struggling at this time, if you're going through anything difficult at this time, I totally understand. Capricorns are going through tough stuff at the moment. So too uh, are Pisceans and Aquarians as well. What I can say here is that, and I said this in when I recorded it a couple of nights ago, or however many nights ago I recorded it, um, I said, use the outer world to take you within, okay? If, if the circumstances in the outside world are particularly challenging, it's asking you to go within, to really nurture and care for your own self that's what the spiritual path is all about and for me the spiritual path is doing regular meditation and it's ridding my life of addictions that's what the spiritual path is you know and it's how do i become more free and when the outside world is particularly challenging it means there's some inner work to be done so capricorn that was my special message that I had for you i hope i've remembered it correctly i've just checked and one of you's written a really nice comment about the previous one i recorded so that's okay but um 
yeah, I, I did make a, a special note about the spiritual path. You're going to get through Capricorn. You're being polished into a diamond. And when we're polished, you know, um, Rumi says, how, how can your mirror be polished if you're irritated by every rub? You know, you've you got to you got to go with it. So I'm, I'm wishing you well here, Capricorn. Uh, let's have a look here. So we've got mid-month. The sun is going to step into Leo in your eighth house, while Mars is going to step into Virgo in your ninth house. Okay, so we've got the sun. There could be challenges in relationships with in-laws. We could see that with Mars as well. There's a lot of eighth house activity. This is in-laws. Sun is going to continue that, but the sun, what the sun does here is it illuminates. So you may gain insight into some hidden agendas. So mid-month onwards, you might actually learn some things about the dynamics of the people around you, and that might help you to just let go, perhaps of any expectations you may have around people around you as well. But there's something about letting go here that will be easier to do, perhaps, when the sun steps in here to the eighth house mid-month onwards you know you, you might gain some extra insights here now mars is going to step into your ninth house okay so this is great energy for learning something new uh, but definitely be careful of run-ins with authority or how you speak with your father how you speak with your boss at work any of that mars could be a bit rebellious here or doesn't see eye to eye with people definitely in positions of authority but with this Mars energy here in the ninth house this is good for learning something new that's a good way to channel this Mars energy to, to get engaged with learning skilling up you know adding that next string to your bow now we've got a full moon in Capricorn Travana Nakshatra happening on the 1st of August in your first house so a cycle may close out in your life this is huge Capricorn this is to do with your whole life this is your full moon so look and see what really big dynamic big pattern or big thing is closing out in your life on the 1st of August I've got the note here it could be a big pattern that you no longer need and we've got a new moon in Cancer Ashleisha Nakshatra happening on the 16th of August in your seventh house so you could wish for a renewal of your heart you know you could wish for a renewal of your partnership you could kind of speak to God you could give your partnership to God you could really ask deeply for some guidance about your love life uh, about how to meet someone if you're single or if you're in a partnership that's not doing well you could really ask God to just look could you could you step in and take care of that person could you take care of me could you show us every step of what's next you know and and be really honest with your feelings here uh, on that new moon and and wish for for good guidance Capricorn I'm wishing you well take care i want to thank you so much for tuning in i apologize about the different lighting but you know i am thinking that i will record some transit videos during the day anyway so it's quite good i, I get to see as well how this edits and how it works so that's good all right we are now going to welcome aquarius aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining yes the scene is different. We've got a new scene here. Uh, I'm wearing dark blue. You can see I, I am actually due to have a meeting with a master of starlight in, gosh, in 20 minutes. I might have to buy some more time. Basically what happened, Aquarius, was one of you lovely people out there alerted me to an error in your notes, in your segment. And I looked it up and I thought, oh, if I made the error here, I've probably made it elsewhere as well. And I looked back and it's as far back as Sagittarius, I do believe. I think we're okay besides that. What I'm learning here is that I really do have to double check my notes before I hit record. I will do that. From here on, um, I have made a couple of errors in these uh, monthlies. I do my absolute best, though, to get it right. And a lot of times I do get it right. But yeah, every now and then I make a mistake. So um, I think so this is for Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. We're all having a little bit of I'm wearing dark blue today. We're all having a bit of Saturn retrograde action. Maybe there's something we're having to redo or repeat. So if that's you, if that's a message for one of you out there, this could be relevant. Let's take a look. So Mercury across the month of August will step closer to Mars in the first part of the month. And that's happening in your seventh house. So there could be frustrations with people around you. Take care of how you speak with other people 
go easy on people. You can invest this energy into your work. Uh, if, if you have energy, put it into your work and, and things should go well. Now mid-month, the sun will step into your seventh house while Mars will step into Virgo in your eighth house. Okay, so from the sun's point of view, you are quite likely to have heightened empathy for people around you. Uh, you might also want more alone time. So that's just a, a natural thing of, of the sun being in this place. Uh, Mars stepping into the eighth house this is good energy for clutter clearing your space. So if there have been, if there are cupboards where you have like jam packed stuff and you know, um, you think, oh, one day I'm gonna deal with that. That day is probably in August, <laughs> okay? So you are gonna want to do some good clutter clearing of your space uh, mid month onwards. That will be a great activity for you, Aquarius. Now we've got a full moon in Capricorn, Shravan and Nakshatra happening on the 1st of August in your 12th house. So listen carefully for spiritual guidance at this time. Your team from Beyond the Veil, they might be able to give you some great wisdom at this time uh, and really guide you as to what's coming next. And the other thing we've got here is that you could watch some big cycles close out at this time. And this is particularly uh, in relationship with your spiritual development. If there's been something that you've been working at for years, like why do I keep attracting this kind of person? Yeah, maybe you're gonna discover on the 1st of August that some major cycle really comes to an end at this time and a whole new cycle is gonna open up. And we have a new moon in Cancer Ashlesha Nakshatra happening on the 16th of August in your sixth house. So the note I've got here is project next steps in your career. See yourself succeeding on that path. And that's a kind of interesting way of saying wish for next steps in your career. But what I'm actually saying to actively project seeing yourself doing the cool, exciting thing that you want to be doing next. And yeah, if you particularly do that activity on or around the 16th of August, that's the seed that's been sown. You just let that go and let the universe make it happen for you and you can watch it grow in your life. Aquarius, I'm wishing you well. Take care. Any of those of you who are going through challenges with your Sadi Sati, hang in there, all right? It's, it's gonna be fine. Uh, you just, you just got to go with it. I said that just now to Capricorn as well. I'll quote Rumi again. Why not? Rumi says that, you know, you're, you're being polished. I think he says you're being, your mirror is being polished. Or does he say you're being polished into a diamond? I'm not sure. If I can find it in editing, I will. I might not have time for editing today. I'm so busy. But um, he says, if you're irritated by every rub, how will your mirror be polished? And I really like that. So you kind of got to go with it, Aquarius, if you're going through anything challenging. All right, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Take care. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Pisces, look, we're in a different day. It's daylight. We've got clouds in London and I'm wearing dark blue. I'm not wearing yellow anymore. What's going on? Right, so I made an error in the notes and one of you eagle-eyed viewers spotted it and kindly let me know. I wanna thank you so much uh, to that viewer. I have written a little thank you on the comments, but maybe I'll thank them again before I post this one. So this is the next day and I'm just re-recording. Basically, I said that Mars is gonna step into Virgo in and I messed up the house. I've got it correct now. I've just rewritten it. And this has shown me I really do have to double check. I normally do. I normally do double check all my notes before I start. But yeah, I think the day I did this one, I was just super tired and I thought, oh, it'll be fine. And no, it wasn't fine. So my lesson is double check no matter what. I certainly will. Uh, let's take a look at this. So we've got Mercury stepping closer to Mars across the first part of your month in your sixth house. So this is a really, really terrific combination. Both of these planets excel here. Both of these planets do really well here in the sixth house. So you've got superb strategic energy. You've got superb hands-on, get-it-done energy. 
this is really good Pisces so you're starting this month strong which is great now mid-month we've got the Sun stepping into Leo in your sixth house while Mars steps into Virgo in your seventh house okay so we've got excellent energy with the Sun here stepping into Leo in your sixth that is winning energy that is you know you're gonna win business win over clients win over the competition uh, you're going to win this is win winning in court cases and things like that it's, it's winning energy it's very very good but Mars on the other hand let's have a look now Mars is stepping into Virgo in your seventh house we've got here be careful with how you speak to your partner you might be kind of there just might be something a bit more aggressive about you or you come off that way or something like that um, and this is also take care of how you speak with people at work as well especially if you've got a business partner or any of that the Mars energy is good for your work though it's good for getting stuff done especially if you're a self-employed person you work contract or project by project basis any of that this Mars energy is good for that but it's just take care of how you speak to people you might come off a bit aggressive or something like that at this time now there's a full moon in Capricorn Shravana Nakshatra happening on the 1st of August in your 11th house so this is a great time to have a real heart-to-heart -heart conversation with one of your close friends or a sibling but you're going to be a particularly good listener at this time and if you can give someone the gift of your listening ears Pisces that would be really amazing there could be some big cycles that close out in your friendship or network circles or to do with your sibling siblings plural as well so look out for that that's on the 1st of August and then we've got a new moon in Cancer Ashleesha Nakshatra happening on the 16th of August in your fifth house so this is definitely a great time to wish for more creative ideas you might want to keep a little a notebook with you everywhere you go and jot down your ideas um, great time to become pregnant as well potentially or to wish for you know uh, a, a baby in your life you know it's a great time just to wish for that a great, a great time to wish for that beautiful family that you want to create Pisces but that is what I have for you today. I'm going to wrap up this video now. I want to thank you so much. I want to thank anyone who has watched the whole video, of course, as well. Thank you so much. I want to thank especially the lovely viewer. Um, gosh, if I can, let's see if I can find her name. We've got here. Oh, I can't really read that, but it's it's a lovely name. And I want to thank you so much. I don't know if you're still watching, but um, yes. Thank you to all my viewers and please do like on this video, especially I would have lost how many, how many views have I lost? Because uh, uh, I'm going to have to take this one down 688 views and 118 likes. So I'm going to lose all of that, but I'm going to launch it again now. And I want to thank all those of you who have watched the whole video. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you next time.